I've got a lot of cleaning up to do now. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back for another episode. This one's gonna be a pretty standard episode. I'll run through the boat, a little bit of diving. I managed to get out for a reef trip recently, which is unreal. Before I went out on a trip, I actually went through my dive gear, checked everything, made sure it all looked good because I hadn't used it in so long. And there was one key thing that I didn't check, that I should have checked, and I would have had a much better sort of first half of the day if I had checked it. So yeah, stick around, I'll go through the boat, we'll go through the day's diving, and at the end I'm gonna run through all my gear. What I'll take out on sort of a regular dive, if somebody hit me up and said, hey man, wanna come for a dive? This is what I'll take. The project boat. So what's happened in here over the last sort of month or so? I've gone through and put some extra glass in the corners of the floor all the way around. And you've probably seen this already. I've, I've put the back in. got these small sections that I've put a little bit of bog and just one layer of glass. So what I did in here, just get a little bit of light. See, I glassed the inside of all this whole transom area in. I'm pretty sure most of this wasn't in in the last video, so I've, I've tabbed it all in. And just a few days ago, I put this, I put this face piece on. So it's all basically ready, sanded, ready to just fully coat in glass now. As well as that, I've finished all the lids for the storage areas. And then I put some little stainless um, flush mount pull handles on them. So that's about it for the project boat. Let's talk about the diving. So I managed to snag a spot on a boat for a reef trip um, about a week ago now. The weather was looking pretty good. The viz, I didn't think the viz was gonna be that great. We had really big tides, like a 0.5 to a 6.5 or something like that. And we probably had about, you know, 12 meters of good viz, maybe up to sort of 15, you could kind of see. So like I said before, the first half of the day was a bit rough for me. I'll talk about that a bit as we're going through the footage. So let's check out the footage from the reef trip. And then from there, we'll move on to going through all my kit and having a look at that one thing that I should have checked before I went out. Right -o. After having not dived for a while, I thought I'd be off my game a little bit, but I didn't think I'd be this bad. I hit this fish here very low. I've injured the fish and I'm not gonna land the fish. I hate doing that. Now this next one's a tusky as well. I swim down, line up, and I hit this one high. I am aiming high on the fish here, but from that angle I was hoping the spear would go down through a fair bit of flesh and sort out the cheek on the other side. It tore off, the tusky went down into that coral, and luckily this one came back out and I was able to put a second shot in it. You can see how hard I'm having to swim up to catch up with this fish. I'm swimming up current here. There was a lot of current on this day. So this one goes into a mate's float boat. Time to head down for another one. I get down to the bottom here and just tuck him behind this bit of coral. You can really see the current ripping past me when you look at the weeds here. Now I've already noticed there's three or four tuskies to my left there. I still do a little bit of grunting to see if anything bigger comes in. I slowly move my gun across and line up for a shot. And another swing and a miss. Now it was after that shot that I jumped up in the boat, pulled the shaft out of my gun, had a good look at it, and it had a really good bend about halfway along the shaft. And it kind of explained what was going on. After having not dive for a few months, I really just thought I was off my game. I didn't even consider that I'd have a bent shaft. I had a spare shaft on board. I rigged it up on my gun. And then I was right.
my confidence was back and I started seeing and shooting more fish. On this dive, I make my way to the bottom. The reason I chose to dive just here is for this ledge I'm looking at here. I couldn't spot anything, so I start scanning around, see if there's anything else worth shooting. I get a really good headshot on this trout. Confidence is fully restored now. Time to start finding some more fish. I see another good undercut from the surface, so I take my breath and head down. Just as I get to the bottom, I see these two jacks. One moves out to my left, and one heads back into the little undercut. I get a really good holding shot on this mango jack, and start making my way up. Today really showed me how important gear maintenance is, and how I should spend the time to check those little things before I head out on the trip. Righto guys, back to me in the shed. I'll run through all my dive gear and I'll show you how I should have checked my spears before this trip. Alright guys, my gear. So this is the gear that I'll take out if someone hits me up and says, hey man, let's go out for a dive, this will be what I bring. So I'll start with the wetsuit. So it's a 3.5mm Spiro wetsuit. It's got a hood on it. It's a closed cell wetty. Very toasty, very warm. Bottoms, so these are the long john bottoms. Again, extremely warm. If I was to wear both these at the moment, um, I'd overheat for sure. So what I have been doing is I've just been wearing the top. And just some one mil, I think these are one mil or one and a half mil. Um, just bottoms, so I wear them along with this top. Righto, so booties, they're just two and a half mil booties. Um, these are pretty cool because they're so stretchy. Really easy to put on. Gloves are the same, super stretchy on top, plenty of um, protection for the palm of your hand if you're grabbing into fish gills and stuff like that. So weight belt, so I've got four weights on here at the moment, that'll vary depending on what suit I'm wearing. I use a rubber weight belt so it's stretchy rather than like a fabric one. Because it's rubber, it'll grip on your wetsuit, so when you do it up, you can, um, you know it's not going to move around too much, you get it nice and firm with a, with the quick release buckle. Alright. Snorkel mask, so here's a Rob Allen snapper mask. It's pretty low profile, seals on the mow pretty well. What I do do is I put a little smear of zinc on the top of my mow and it helps seal it up. See so the zinc inside there. I just use a basic um, Rob Allen snorkel, slim line, no valve or anything like that, so it's you know less drag in the water, and I just tuck that up underneath my strap. I also carry a spare mask. I've never needed the spare mask, plenty of other people have used it. Knife, I've been using this um, Adreno knife that I picked up well, a couple of months ago now. It's nice and heavy, which is a good change to those cheaper knives. It's stayed nice and sharp so far. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. It's been a really good knife. Nice solid sheath on it, and I just use just some endless Velcro, and I put that on that on the inside of my leg. Flag, very important. Float, Rob Allen, 12 litre float, hard float. You drag that over rocks. This thing's been everywhere. Um, it's been a solid float. I've seen it go underwater plenty of times now. Big fish. You may have seen this in some of my videos. I've generally carried around when I'm chasing Spanish and stuff like that, but it works for trout and things like that as well. Just a little basic throw flasher. So, float line. So, it's just basic green rope. This stuff's rated to about 360, 400 kilos, something like that. Um, I splice all my loops in it. So, it 
stays nice and strong, I'll splice my speed spike on. So I've got a shorter one, so that's when I'm diving in that sort of, you know, anywhere up to sort of 15 meter range. And I've got a longer one for those little bit deeper dives. Right, one thing I've forgotten, hold on. Zinc, if I've ever been diving with you, you'll know that I've always got a tube of this, or maybe even two tubes. Right, so I'm gonna go for a dive. Someone rings up, these are the guns that I'm gonna take. It's my 900 Rob Allen Sparrow. So it's got 16 mil rubbers, open muzzle, and upgraded spear, seven and a half mil spear. So these come standard with a closed muzzle, seven mil spear, I think, and one single rubber. So I've beefed this one up a little bit, and this is my main gun. So this is a 1200 Rob Allen tuner. So they come with a seven and a half mil spear, 16 mil double rubber, and that's about it. Very basic. You'll notice something with all my gear. It's very simple. I find the more simple it is, the more likely you are to use it, and the more fun you're gonna have when you use it. One more thing with the guns, you'll notice they're a different length, but they're basically the same setup. So they're both open muzzle, same overhang, same trigger mix. So I can pretty well grab any of my guns. I've got a 1400 as well. And they all shoot very similar. They're all double band, 16 mil, seven and a half mil shafts. I just find if I keep them all the same, I'm way more consistent with my shots and my shot placements. Fins, so these are very, getting very knocked around now. You can see how much I lay on the bottom and they get scratched up laying on the bottom. So these are carbon die bars. They were sold as softs, but I think that they're mediums, not softs. But they've been a great fin. I actually replaced some Spear, um, I think that's how you pronounce it, Softs. So maybe I'd see them up in that back corner there. I replaced the Spears with these Dye Bars. I did want Softs in the Dye Bars, but I've, I've found these to be pretty good for me. So prior to the reef trip, I went through and I checked everything on the guns. I think I replaced the, the shooting line on this one. Um, I retied the knot on this little reel gun. Went through and checked the rubbers. They were a little bit ratty, but they're not too bad. They weren't gonna snap or anything like that. And I was pretty happy with it. One key thing that I should have checked, but I didn't, you may know now from the video, is the shaft. So I've got a couple of shafts here. One, one older one, one brand new one. And I'll show you what I do to check my shafts. Get these two surfaces. So I'll do the um, nice straight one first. Put the shaft on there and you just basically just roll it. And all I'm looking for is I'm looking to see if this tip's wobbling around, this end's wobbling around. It's staying nice and straight and true, and I can't see any movement anywhere in the shaft, so I know that that shaft's nice and straight. But I now for a bent shaft. So this is a lot older shaft, and I had issues with this oh, probably about 12 months ago now, and I just put it up on a rack, it's no point trying to straighten this one. If you watch this end here, you'll see it wobbling around as I'm rolling it. Now this one's actually bent from here forwards. So that shaft the other day was actually bent sort of mid shaft. It was very noticeable once I got back up into the boat. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you got something out of that one. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.